We are Movie Menu Reviews. Yo podcast too. Yo podcast too. Yo podcast too. Yo podcast too. Woo 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 woo. On today's menu, we'll be reviewing It Chapter 2. Welcome, ladies and gents. I'm Dan the Man Munoz, host of Movie Many Reviews, your weekly movie news and reviews podcast. Though we've been on hiatus, we're back for a bonus episode just for you. Specials feature. Yes. Also joining me today is uh, our special co-host, <laughs> because uh, they're not supposed to be here because we're supposed to be on break. We are on break. Uh, uh, Z <laughs> and Mike Stan. Hey. They all float <laughs> down here, too. Yeah. Uh, can I be Penny and he can be wise? And together, sure. no, he definitely cannot be. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> um, but we do have quite a bit of movie news that's happened since we've been on hiatus. Uh, have you guys been enjoying your hiatus so far? I have been enjoying not. That's not true. I've been watching movies. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I realized when I was on hiatus, I haven't seen that many movies. Well, yeah, like I would normally be doing. Um, so I think that's interesting. Yeah. yeah that's I don't know if it's interesting to you, but it's interesting to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's interesting in nobody. No, <laughs> well, I mean, but, but to be fair, right? Like September doesn't have great releases, uh, you know, th- and so that's why we take a break during this time. Um, and there, yeah, I mean, like with the exception of it, right? Like there's not been a lot of like awesome things to run out to go watch. Well, well, well Ad Astra is coming out with Brad Pitt and Tom Again, I, I'll repeat what I just said. <laughs> I mean, people might say, I don't know. Re- Ready or Not did come out. That's well. true. Yeah, it came out in August. Yeah. 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 That came in August. Yeah. <laughs> Which I did see and I would say dine in for that. All, All right. right. Thank you. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and go to our movie news yes. since we do have quite a bit to cover. Uh, the first thing we're going to discuss is going to be some trailers that were released. And the yeah. first trailer is the teaser trailer for Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Mm. Uh, now, it's a super short 30-second teaser trailer that was right in front of IT Chapter 2. Um, what did you guys think about this trailer this that is the was released? This is teaser to the teaser, right? Because initially they released a teaser teaser. And now it wasn't, even the a, it wasn't even a teaser. It was like a... Like a um, it was a, a promo. It was a, it was a teaser teaser. It was, well, a, no, it was like a... Um, like Them getting cost, drunk. Costume check or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah. While, while being drunk. Um, so this is the actual teaser teaser. Uh, I just... I'm not excited about it. That's just, that's just how I feel about it. I kind of wish that DC would have just buried the whole tattooed faced Harley Quinn and done a different one. I mean, you know, like we're, we're moving past the, 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 the suicide squad. Clearly they're, uh, they're going to redo suicide squad and rename it the suicide squad part two with uh, James Gunn. So I'm just saying like, I I can do without the, this Harley Quinn, but Margot Robbie, you know, like, let's watch it and see what happens. Well, I'm, I'm actually looking very forward to this. Um, I think, Margot Robbie was a stand-up for Suicide Squad. Yeah. Uh, was she my ideal Harley Quinn? No, I, I mean, I would have liked someone else probably, but she did a pretty good job for what she was given. Yeah. And she now has become uh, a powerhouse with behind the scenes. She's yeah. producing this film. She is. And um, I look forward to seeing what they create. And I, I like Birds of Prey. I always liked the Birds of Prey comics. <sighs> See, that's where that's where I fall. Like my, my That's where it falls down for me. Like I'm glad that she has the power and she's going to do something, but is she a Harley Quinn fan? Does yeah, she know? Yeah, she, she, she did hardcore research. Okay. And she fell in love with Harley because Quinn. Because when I'm looking she at... she believes in it. Yeah, but when I'm looking at the Huntress, you're looking at uh, Cassandra, uh, I forget the last the, her last name, you know, you're seeing back girl in that as well but they're not real depictions and even at that i don't see black mask with a black mask so i'm like again part of me is like the fanboy of, of dc and going like dc you have to turn something good you have to give us something good but i don't know if this is the movie we're waiting for you know what i mean like i think joker is going to be an interesting depiction of that but it's not the dc movie that we're waiting for to kind of like reestablish things and i don't think this one's going to reestablish anything i know i think what it's going to do is going to do what's intended for it to have fun okay i think it's going to be a fun film to watch is gonna be funny. I feel like this is gonna be their Deadpool yeah. essence of like yeah. comedic timing, um, breaking the fourth wall, all that craziness. That's and fun. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm actually looking forward to it. What about you, Mike? I think it's uh, still remnants of Suicide Squad, which is and a, I think it's like yeah. it's like closing it off. And I'm ho- I'm hoping it's better than Suicide Squad, but I'm definitely looking forward to 
uh, the new Joker coming out with uh, Joaquin Phoenix, yeah. as as well as that has the, nothing to do with this film. But I yeah. know, I yeah. know, and and the the uh, James Gunn version of the Suicide Squad yeah. when that yeah. gets released, I I feel like that's going to be the turning point. And the very interesting note, we'll talk about this when we come back for Joker, but that it will be considered DC Black Label, so it's a completely different subcategory uh, where it's going to be doing Elseworlds, and I'm really looking forward to it because they can do whatever they want with it. It. So you, when you say, uh, so what you're talking about is specifically like what they're currently, what they did with Joker. Yeah, with Joker, oh, gotcha. would be it would not be part of the um, the the world building, the DCEU they've already created. It's going to be a completely separate storyline that has recurrent characters, but not the same characters that are involved in the main DCEU. Yeah, I'm I'm totally down for that. It kind of it kind of feels like the uh the older uh, Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah, like, and and I do feel like this this Harley Quinn one might be one of those Elseworld too. It might be DC Black Label. Okay, so something that has come up um, now is that we're gonna have uh, a new tr- a new film of the Bad Boys uh, franchise. Yeah. Bad Boys for Life. Bad Boys uh, for Life, <laughs> which is funny because it's the third film, uh, and they have four in there. <laughs> so. Uh, miss opportunity? Yeah, oh, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe they're just skipping part three because it was so bad that Michael Bay had to be fired from it. Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but let's, let's talk about the trailer. with uh, So Mario Lawrence is back. So is Will Smith. Yeah. What do you guys think about this trailer for Bad Boys for Life? It looks like garbage. And it looks like they just want to cash in as much as they can. You know what? <laughs> I have to disagree. Yeah? You, you, you really excited for this? I'm not super excited for it. Okay. But but I think having Martin Lawrence in Agreed. this role, yeah. I think, I mean, sure, Will Smith does Will Smith things. He's yeah. Will Smith. <laughs> but to see Martin Lawrence back in this world, yeah. I want to see how they can maneuver that to be um, believable, yeah. I guess. And I want to see the comedy in that. I just want to make sure that it ends here and what it looks like. No, they're, they're doing one more movie after this. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, man. Because, see, this is what I'm looking at. What I'm looking at is a movie that will be a, a remake of Lethal Weapon, the the first one, where Martin Lawrence is playing the, the straight the straight role, and then you have the Will Smith character, and I want to see that. I've missed the buddy cop movies, but if they're going to make another one, then I'm just, you've lost my interest. I don't want to see this anymore. Sounds like you'll need to rewatch Stuber. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't think this is going to be one of those films. No, I don't I, think so. Yeah. Well, funny enough, Bad Wars has, has a huge following. So, it does. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Now, for the trailer itself, I would say I did like the comedy aspect of Martin okay. Lawrence. I did think the action sequence were pretty cool with Will Smith. I just want. I just. I'm hoping that they tie well together yeah, in okay. this one. Yeah, and, and it's and been such a long time since the last film. That's true. And and Mike just made a good point. The Stuber made that joke about glasses and being able to see straight. That that was in Stuber. That was a joke that was played in Stuber. Yeah, but those films are like filming them, you know, simultaneously. Yeah. So it does. It doesn't yeah. seem like it's still. No, no, I, I get you. But yeah, it's a very interesting movie because it's being directed by two directors who are um, hip hop video directors. So I'm interesting in seeing how they can try to recreate. I mean, not to say that that you know you cannot direct better than Michael Bay because anyone can. Uh, so I'm just really interested to see what they can do with that. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next trailer uh, for Black Christmas. Uh, so this is a remake of a remake. Yeah, I mean they they this movie I think is from the seventies or eighties, Black Christmas. Oh, okay. And then they remade it in the early two thousands. Okay. Oh. Uh, or late two thousands. Like oh wow, it's been that recent. Yeah, and so now this is a complete new remake wow. with a whole new twist. And it's done by Blumhouse. What's the uh, new twist? Well, um, <laughs> that is done by Blumhouse. <laughs> <laughs> it's done by Blumhouse. Well, originally it was uh, like uh, like a scream slasher type of film, okay, okay. which just does seem. But they, now it seems like in this trailer they've added a supernatural element to that as well, yeah. with the cult and um, and the frat house and that being like just, you know summoning, sacrificing stuff uh-huh, like that. Uh-huh. Now the body problem with the trailer, though, I think the movie looks decent. Yes, and something fun, more like fun to watch as get, well. Get to the point. But Here we go. Like Here we go. They gave a lot away. In you the mean trailer. the whole movie? You mean the whole movie was like, given away I in the wish, trailer? Yeah, I wish I didn't know about the <laughs> ritual or it being like uh, about sacrifices and uh, and a cult or whatever. Or even the been... dean being like the leader of the cult. Like it's all in the movie. We know exactly what the movie's going to be. And then the sorority sisters they fight the fraternity. Right, it's like a big fight out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It looks like the Avengers like assembled at that point, and they're like Avengers, Kappa, Beta, <laughs> Zed, 
fight. I don't know. Like it just <laughs> it looks it looks like the movie was just given away. You know, and and Bloomhouse they just lost one of those the the big movie right. They were going to release a movie. They just lost that one, so that's a huge uh, you know bummer for them. Uh, but then this one just looks really ridiculous. And and you know I have to heart back to like that discussion about violence on on, on campus and violence like you know what I mean. Like wasn't Bloomhouse like the reason why they lost that other movie was because of the violence depicted and now they're going to bring violence to the campus of, of a college in which we i don't know i'm just i'm i i'm not interested in this i i really loved their other production uh what was it the one called uh, happy death happy death day man like that was a brilliant i want to see part three like i want that more than i want this okay well a movie i recommend even though it's not blumhouse because it's fox searchlight okay. it's uh ready or not <laughs> ready just, or not just gonna keep on saying that <laughs> just watch that one instead uh <laughs> so the next trailer that we're gonna review is a batshit crazy out of nowhere trailer that I feel just like popped we're online. Just, we're just reviewing and, bad movies at this point. <laughs> and um, it's called Sofa Killer. Yes. Uh, it's about literally, it's not even a real sofa. It's a recliner. It uh, is a recliner. Yeah. Well, I guess it's a recliner sofa, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, that that goes and kills people and has like creepy eyes and stuff and yeah, like it yeah. stalks people and 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 it's possessed. What did you guys think of this Bastion Crazy trailer? I'll, I'll give this a mic. Of a killer sofa. I, I I saw how excited Dan was for the trailer, <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm I'm very curious. I'll watch this. How Doug said I was. You were like. <laughs> He was. He wasn't. No, no. I was excited for the next trailer we're going to talk about. He was about. drooling oh, okay. a lot. Yeah. He was actually really excited about Sofa Killer. And when I asked him, like, hey, I think this killer, is my killer sofa. Whatever. That, what, th- this looks Get like, it right. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like it's going to be a direct to the VOD thing. And you're like, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a movie. It, it has p- the same potential as what was the movie called with the tire? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Killer oh, Tire? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It was it's in the same vein. The one that right? had the psychic powers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's in the same vein as that. I, I it looks, I gotta look it up now. It, yeah. it looks. It looks like it could be fun. Uh, the, I don't know. The, the, I'll, I'll, I'll rubber. We'll watch it. Rubber. Yeah, there you there go. You Thank go, yeah. you. Yeah, that was done in 2000. So crazy. I it, it looks like every 10 sh- years, every 10 years this has ah, happened. Okay, so it's like it. It's like when an inanimate object comes it's, to life and like, makes a movie out of it. It's like snakes on a plane or something. I think it, it looks like it'll be it's a like potential. A, like a, it's like a D horror, not even a B yeah, horror, no, like no, a no. D <laughs> horror classic. But you know, it could be fun. It'd be like a movie you grab with friends and you just see yeah. no, 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 it's, it's, no. It's a midnight showing. Like see it in a in a packed house. Or if you're in LA, they just opened the draft house. Um, Alamo. Okay, yeah, so you can um, drink while watching. Right, okay. you can totally do that. I dig that. Okay, <laughs> now, <there's laughs> I like how we sold Z somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I will drink and watch this movie, and even at that, like the other thing I was going to say, there's no real like heavyweight stars, right? Sam L. Jackson was a heavyweight star. That's why Six in the Plane works so well. This one is like based in Australia uh, or New Zealand. Sorry, to the, <laughs> like, I don't know what yeah, they are. Big rivals. They are not they are. the same. I'm, I apologize for that. To but the Kiwis and to the to the Aussies and the Hobbits. You know, like I, I just don't understand. But I, it just looks ridiculous. I don't. I don't know. I I just don't know. One thing I know <laughs> is the next trailer I am super excited for. Nice. It was my most anticip- most anticipated pick of the fall season, and that's <laughs> Doctor Sleep, Stephen King's Doctor Sleep, yeah. which is directed by Mike Flanagan. Um, the final trailer just was released. Yes, guys, what did you guys think about the trailer for Doctor Sleep? Mike, uh, I'm not a, honestly like I'm less excited. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you feel like we've just watched really bad trailers? It may be. Yeah. You know, like the only thing that ties me in with it is knowing that Mike Flanagan's attached to Agreed. it. Agreed. That yeah. makes me like I, I, he's attached. He directed this, so uh, I'll, I'll check it out. But. I, I don't know. Like the the trailer is kind of kind of a miss for me. Yeah, I'm I'm the, I'm with Mike on this uh, one. I'm I, sorry, Dan. No, 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 no. <laughs> Fuck you, you both. <laughs> I shouldn't apologize because listen, this is just bad, bad. Uh, you know, trailer editing. And no, I, the trailer was great. I'm excited for this film even more I'm, now. I'm, I'm glad you're excited. Yeah. <laughs> what what I'm what I'm well, the reason why I'm just disappointed with the trailer is because it leans so heavily on the Shining movie, um, and it does so. It, it is a sequel. What? It, well, it's. Yeah, and, and but it it leans on it pretty poorly because he's like, I've always called it The Shining, and it's like, no, you didn't. You got that from the, the yeah. He was the a groundskeeper, li- a little boy. Got, and ever since then, he didn't know what it was. But the groundskeeper told him what it was. So exactly. So, so why so, didn't he say like, hey, th- I knew a guy who was just like us, and he told me. I, I know, I know, nitpicking. I apologize, but it honestly, it just feels like it's leaning too much on an old classic. And by doing that, it's just going to try redoing The Shining. And it's like, okay, Mike Flanagan, you you had me at Mike Flanagan. <laughs> I'm going to watch this movie, but I am not excited like Mike is. 
Then, like Mike is. Mike was not excited either. So that's what I mean. I'm exactly like what he is right now. I'm not <laughs> excited about this at all. Okay, I'm looking forward to. It. I yes. think you McGregor. Tell us why you're excited great. about it. I'm excited that they're they're bringing in a new child in the in the movie who's a lot more powerful. I like to see um, Rebecca Ferguson and her character and what that's all about. Um, and then them having to go to the out, um, Overlook Hotel, uh, which was the you know the villain in the first film uh-huh. now to be like an ally for them in the second film mm. i love shit like that okay i think that's great when they call do callbacks right it's like my favorite thing it's gonna be like, like x connected so i'm happy about that so it's like magneto it, joining the x-men and i love the shining and um the book and the movie yeah. and um so i'm really excited for this for this film cool can't cannot wait all yeah. right all right so that's all the trailers that we have going on now so which is happy which is good because we ended with a uh stephen king one and we're gonna go and review a uh stephen king movie yes <laughs> that, that is the perfect segue actually. Yeah. it is yeah yeah you're welcome yeah movie menu okay the film that we are reviewing is it chapter two Directed by Annie Muschietti, written by, screenplay by Gary Doberman, based on a novel by Stephen King. Uh, here's the plot. 27 years after the first encounter with the terrifying Pennywise, the Losers Club have grown up and moved away until a devastating phone call brings them back mm-hmm. to Derry, Maine. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Starring Jessica Chastain, James McAvoy, Bill Hader, Isaiah Mustafa, Jay Ryan, James Ransone, and Bill Skarsgård. All right, guys. So we have all seen this film. Mm-hmm. So we will give a spoiler-free review. That's correct. Um, I, we would decide this movie is worth a dining and watch it in theaters, take out a way to watch it at home, or leftovers. Uh, get eaten by your by the by a clown. <laughs> 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 that sounds weird. That just sounds really <laughs> sexual. That, why did you go there? Uh, I didn't go there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um. <laughs> You know, yeah, he's, that would, he's that just would be his that, that would be very <laughs> interesting, though, if you if you think about it. Like, say for example, like Pennywise. I don't want to spoil anything, but, but, but what if Pennywise was going up against a guy who's got a fetish for clowns? That's that would be interesting. <laughs> would I'm, that, I'm curious how would that, that would work. <laughs> the the insane clown posse. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I would see a movie like that. Pennywise versus the insane, insane clown, clown posse. posse? I'm, yeah. I'm down to okay. see that. Now, Good. before you guys give your rating, we have a couple of people have commented. Okay, um, we have Sean Aguirre. Hey, Sean. Hey, Sean. Uh, he Hi. said it. Uh, was so good and then we have Carla Esmeralda who is my sister-in-law hey hi, hi. Um, uh, she said it was awesome as well so, okay uh, so um, let's go ahead and rate this film uh, Z you go first all right I will say that this is a very very soft dine-in Mike I, I agree with Z hey so we're on the same page today. yeah I know I, dude I don't this know. never happens I know uh, <laughs> you I, guys <laughs> you guys go get a room <laughs> um, I may give it a dine in as well you get it well you're the, you're you're gonna be the meat in the middle you realize <laughs> <laughs> like I am right now <laughs> That's what yeah. I mean. like I am always <laughs> apparently uh, so uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and discuss uh, it chapter two now we're gonna do spoiler free yes um and we are going to do a spoiler section, but we're going to end the live feed and then do it podcast only. Yeah, so, so if you guys want to hear our spoilers reviews mm-hmm. on this uh, chapter two, uh, make sure you tune, you subscribe to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, or wherever you listen to podcasts uh, to get our full review. Um, so on that note, uh, what did you guys think about, first of all, um, the overall casting of this film from the first one to where they are now. Absolutely brilliant. The, without a doubt, this was the best casting job. And I believe the the, the now uh, known story is that the, the actors, the young actors they had, they asked them, if you could choose an actor to play you older, who would it be? And they, the, the, the child actors picked all of these characters actors wow. uh, which then there's this, there's a lot of great moments where they segue between the young actors and the older actors and it's such a great ca- like it's, See, it's that's great what I felt like was missing in the first film well, I feel like they should have included some parts of the adults 
to like sandwich in the. You're just thinking about sandwiches now. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am to to like the beginning of the film and the end of the film and like have like the kids stories. But I, that's why I felt like the first one was. And I guess it's because I'm such a fan of the miniseries. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, that, you're a big fan of the miniseries. I did not like the miniseries. I, I just saw it recently, like over the weekend, and I still enjoyed it. Okay. Um, I mean the ending is silly, but it's still like really well done. Okay. Um, and that intertwining of of his of uh, past and present. Yes. Is such a f- interesting way to watch and tell a story. However, however, you can only do that in a mini series. You can't do that in a film. So I think that this movie. I disagree. I well, I mean, except it's hard to tell. They did it in this film. They did a really good job. Um, <laughs> well, we're, we're not. We're, we're talking about the actors. We're talking about the just simply. Oh, how, yes. Yeah, yeah. So let's go with the actors, and we'll get more into that. And and that's where my my struggle with the movie actually comes in. But anyways, Jessica Chastain is Beverly. Uh, she knocked it out of the park. I mean, Chastain is always a solid. Pick. But you know what? After watching the first film again, like I saw yeah. again over the weekend, um, they Amy Adams would have looked exactly like her. You think so? Yeah, I kept on like watching. Yeah, Bev, the young Bev. I was like, Amy Adams would have been her, a better choice. They, they look identical. Oh uh, well, I, I get that, but as far as like acting abilities, I think she she does grow the character out a lot more, and I thought that was fantastic uh, to watch. Uh, James McAvoy as the Billy character, uh, I think does such a good job. However, his accent's a little bit uh, a hit or miss for me. What did you guys feel about his accent? Um, it didn't really bother me too much. I mean, it, like, I did like I know he was going for the stuttering, but like, what just, I, you know, it just it, it really reminded me of um, of um, um, Split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I got Agreed. that vibe a lot, and yeah, yeah. And, um, it did, did kind of carry only, over. That was yeah. only like the the thing that would that bother me. Yeah. But other than that, it was fine. By the way, you're, you're, I can see what Dan's doing here. And, <laughs> and if you've ever watched uh, Sharp Objects, Amy Adams is the older version of the same actress. So I know what you're talking about. I'm just saying, like, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> I was like, look at that. Guys, Bill Hader in this movie. Amazing. Great. Yeah, was, the standout. Uh, great, the yeah. standout of this movie. Uh, Which is interesting because I would, you know, the first, when the younger, younger film the it was Bev, Bill, and Ben's story. I would say yes. And then this film is more Richie and Eddie's story. Yes, which is which is actually part of the narrative. This is part of the story in the book where the very early characters, those are the main ones. But the the bigger characters, the bigger growth, I would say it's it's Bill Hader's uh, Richie and Mike, uh, Richie, Mike, and. Um, and, and and Eddie because those those are like the the really big characters that that have much more development over time uh, because if you realize Ben Billy and and uh, and Bev they don't really grow they stay where they're at um, but anyways back to the actors yeah the, I, um, uh, their characters they don't find anything new from the audience perspective yeah. Um, Richie, though, is we learn as an yeah. audience something new from him as well. You learn a whole lot about him. Yeah. You learn, which we don't want to. No, no, no. There, there's a spoiler. Yeah, there. yeah, it would be spoiler. But, but, I, but I think as far as like Richie is concerned, it's it's you know he is he's the heart of the movie, even in the first one, because the the idea that he's the only one who's afraid of clowns. But he is a clown, you know, like he, he's a comedian. And so that that portion of the narrative is really important. I think the way Bill Hader played that was like I believed it because we know Bill Hader's a good stand up comedian. And then you, you understand where he comes from. And it almost felt a little bit like it was it was a very honest depiction. You know, what I mean, like there was no I didn't feel like I was watching uh, the actor Richie. I was watching Bill Hader be himself and good up on Finn Wolfhard for wanting Bill Hader to Hell play his. like yeah. good call on that yeah and then and then and we get to uh, Ben who is uh, not sorry Ben Mike who is being played by Isaiah Mustafa yeah the old spice the guy. old spice guy <laughs> like I'm sorry but I never once considered watching the old spice guy in the TV show in a movie but I'm so glad I did because he does such a good job yeah he was great That's yeah cool. I thought what what really sold me with his character is that he stutters throughout the movie but he doesn't stutter in a way that that say bill does he stutters because he's so scared and you hear him and that's that's a great that's good good acting on on isaiah mustafa's part because that that would be the character who has lived in that fear-ridden town for so long um and then you get to ben uh played by jay ryan what did you guys think of that guy I thought he had he did a great job. I mean, obviously he doesn't look like the younger, younger part, but he kind of does in the eyes. He does, he does, yeah. Um, but he he was still like the heart as well. Yeah, and, and, as a grown up, he was he. Had, 
it was funny, not funny, but it's like Ben could have easily have led the group as yeah. as kids. He could have been the leader, but yeah. because he had no confidence because mm-hmm. of how he looked, yeah. um, Bill was the leader of the group. But as as an adult, he, you know, you when you go back to your childhood, you feel the same way you if you, you, you were fall a kid. Back, you, fall you fall back into back. the roles. Yeah. So, um, but he could have easily have been the leader in that because he was probably like the most nicest and 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 uh, smartest and 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 most one with heart yeah. than all of them. Mike, yeah, yeah, I thought he was great as well, and it's it's just fun to see the the transition from him. It, like the character makes sense. I know I know this isn't different from the original it, but but I just really enjoyed the the uh, the evolution of the child character to the adult character and what he what he becomes and kind of uh, I I guess what Derry does to him when he comes back. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm happy that they went with jo- um with, uh, Joy Ryan. J Ryan. J Ryan. Uh, because you know there was a campaign to have Chris Pratt be this character. Oh, and now I'm happy that um, that did not come to happen. And I agree. I, I think Jay Ryan was the was yeah. The I, I, I yeah. Think, I think, go ahead. Yeah, the film the film needed that like a more uh, like an actor that didn't have that comedic sensibility or not not that he's not funny, not that he's not a funny actor, but that very uh, yeah just. Sin- non- there's a sincerity to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's not, it's comedic. It's more of like a sincerity because he keeps getting shot down repeatedly, 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 uh, which is kind of what, as Dan was saying, like the role would, would co- continue. And sure enough, it does. And there's a lot of moments in this movie where I'm like, oh, man, like I just feel genuinely bad for him. Like if it was Chris Prince Pratt, really? yeah. I wouldn't feel bad for him at all because it's Chris Pratt. Yeah, yeah. It's I, like, yeah, I don't buy it. I think I think he would have brought some like extra comedy into it that wouldn't have been needed. Yeah. And I and I think it would have kind of muddled things up a yeah. bit. I uh, think Bill Hader like B- Bill Hader did a good job taking care of that part. I, of I agree, yeah. And then finally to to round it up with Eddie uh James Well, Rand- it's not technically rounding it up, but You're yeah. right, you're right. But you know what I mean? I'm not trying to spoil anything, but you know what I mean? Uh J- uh James uh Ranso. Ranso? Ranson. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think of that guy? I thought it was great. My God. Put him and, and his uh, child actor side by side. They oh. look like father and son. I know. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy how great they did with this cast. They did a really good job in this movie. And I think it's like probably two thirds down away where the, 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 the Eddie character walks into the, um, the shop. And then you see the older character emerge through like a silhouette. Yeah, like yeah. A really, And you're like, yeah, they're literally the same character. Like yeah. that's a perfect casting. I don't know much about the actor James but but I I'm honestly I was like surprised and and actually really pleased with that character because he overall has the biggest arc in this movie. Yeah, I thought he did such a great job as well. I was really happy with it. Um the funny thing is I was listening to an interview with him and um he hates watching himself on screen so he hasn't even seen this movie. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well That's funny. that fits the anxiety. Uh and then finally we get Bill Skarsgård. Returning as Pennywise, yeah. the dancing clown. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, technically it's not just, um, but yeah. What? Go on. I, I mean, Pennywise, he was great. Um, we are missing one character, though. We are. Do you want to uh, talk about the, the final? S- S- Stanley. The, the final loser. Yeah, Stan. That, by the way, I'm not calling them losers. That's their title. Yeah, yeah, the that's Losers the, Club. That's the group. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, the actor Andy Bean. Yeah. Um, uh, he uh, is it a spoiler to talk about that? I mean, it's in the first act. It's in the first and, act, and it's a very popular. Like I knew going in, because yeah. it's in the book. It's it is in, in the, the miniseries. It's literally in the first five minutes of the book, or as soon as you get started with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he he commits suicide at the very beginning of the story. I'm not sure whether or not this is. If, if I'm remembering this correctly, but when he when he get kills himself, he cuts his wrist and he writes on um, the the bathroom wall. Pennywise has returned. Um, so I, I kind of wish they had included that in there because it would have been like this really haunting moment. But that's something that we'll talk about in the spoiler section as to probably why they didn't include that in there. Um, but yeah, what did you guys think of overall? Like we. I think I think my biggest problem with this movie was the pacing and the time. It's a two hour and forty five minute movie. It, you do feel it, and, I, and honestly, I didn't feel it. Really, I did. And you know what? I was I was a little worried going in uh, because I do like my popcorn and soda. Sure. that I was going to have to go, go to the bathroom. bathroom. Yeah, uh, I didn't. I didn't have, feel like I needed to go to the bathroom, and I wasn't like holding like I was for like Avengers uh, in game. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know if like I saw Avengers Endgame three times. If that trained me to like hold myself into watching a movie for so you long, you might be concerned about a UTI at this point, Dan. Like you might want to go to the doctor. I'm, I'm not holding it. Um, I just didn't have to go. Gotcha. Uh, I'm, this is bladder talk, by the way. Uh, so this is a special segment, special corner for, but for urination me, corner. Like I felt like like this movie itself especially there are sections where you know each individual has to like yeah. go through something yeah. uh those that section which i've heard people say was slow yeah for me i was like enthralled in it i was really in it i was wanting to see where they were going with it yeah. uh but the adult section of it in the miniseries was always more my favorite than the kids part gotcha okay. so that's probably why i was more excited because you know kids as kids, we get scared easily. We get scared for this. And the adults, like, they're more, like, cynical and whatnot. So I wanted to see how they were going to tackle that yeah. aspect of it. I just felt less engaged by the adults than I did by the kids. Like, watching kids be terrified and watching kids kind of figure things out, I think that made me kind of feel a sense of, like, you know, uh, connecting with them. Whereas with the adults, I think what you're saying about the cynicism and just, just overall just, like, what they're going through, I thought there were moments in this movie that could have easily been edited out uh, and well, by removing them or, or at least shortened down because I, in the same way that watching Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I felt like there were so many moments where like, hey, that's a DVD extra. You can just remove that and the movie will still remain good. And I, I thought there was just so many of those moments in it where it slowed down. We didn't need it in there, but because, um, you know, Machete had such a, you know, blank well, slate that he can do he whatever he wanted. He has a six hour cut out there. And I believe wow. it because it, it, in, in the same way that Tarantino has a six hour cut for his film, this movie feels like somebody really should have told him, cut this movie down. Now, a bit. I don't know why, though, like. You know, people hate the miniseries or whatever. I still think it's great. I don't but hate I, it. I just think it's lame. But I don't understand, though. And, they, and you know, we have this movie. We have it. That's fine. Yeah. That's, it's fine. It's going to be in, in film history forever. Yeah. But I feel like it really would serve, like, as a as a miniseries on Netflix or Amazon or something like that has a long form. Talent. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. So, but this is a question for you, Dan. Would would you uh, be okay if it would have been a trilogy instead of just two films? I would have been fine. Yeah. Huh. Okay. okay. I don't think there's enough material for a trilogy, though. I don't know if there's a six-hour cut. <laughs> yeah, there's a six-hour cut. Well, there's that's definitely... that's where I'm confused yeah. about. Um, and because in, in Chapter 3. Yeah. Well, and and I think just overall, just talking about what, what he, this movie could have done a little bit better, I think that because this movie focuses so much... So this movie, it plays out in two different timelines. Um, there's a moment in it chapter one where the losers split up uh where they one punches the other one this is not a spoiler this just happens so it's in between because bill, I watched the first bill one. punches it's, it's richie in between july and august yeah so um because it because in that sequence in chapter one when they fight yeah um you see stanley's um bar mitzvah yes but as like a as a like a, a, a scene quick, that goes through yeah and in chapter two you see the whole th- Bar mitzvah. Yeah, you you got to see what happens in, within these two months of of you know because they've forgotten, and I thought that that while I liked it and I, I find it hard to kind of conceptualize how I would cut around that because like honestly like I think the the, the fact that they were zooming backwards and showing the younger kids I was like I would rather follow the the young losers versus the older losers because I'm more engaged by the younger kids than I am with the older see, I'm the opposite I was more engaged with the adults than I was with the kids well I mean but I feel like it could have easily gone like if you would have chosen one and just stuck with it I would have been happy with it you know what I mean like like if this movie was nothing but the adults and them struggling to figure out how to destroy Pennywise then I would have been happy with that but because it kept on going back and forth I was just a little Oh, and I love that. I like ah, that back and forth. Yeah, I <laughs> wish the first one did that more. That's how the book works. But you know, like, and that's kind of where I was like, I don't know whether because I think what worked best for me was like, oh, okay, we're not going to be doing and we're watching chapter one, and I was thoroughly engaged with that. And I think part of me was an expectation of hoping that part chapter two would just be the adults. And I think that's where I, I kind of was like, ah, oh, man, you. I, I don't. I would have been like, you, that's you such a it. missed opportunity if they did that because yeah. the kids are still there. Because I would rather watch a six-hour cut where it's back and forth, back and forth, just like the novel is, and I would be happy with. No, I feel like that's what what was the problem with the first film, and that they already set this precedent of that it was just going to be the kids. Yeah, and then people are expecting that part two was just going to be the adults. That's, that's where so I, when they yeah. when they included the kids, it's like wait, but the adults weren't included in the first one. What's going on in this film? Yeah, why I, is it longer? Blah blah blah. Yeah. 
And I feel like that was the misstep. And that's why, you know, the first one, I, I watched it and I thought it was it was fine. Like, I was not a huge fan, um, but I did enjoy this one more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like- which which I'm a, I know I'm a minority. I, a lot of people love the first one more. Um, this movie didn't get that great reviews, but I still thought it was fun. Yeah, I want to know what the audience thinks about that. Would you have rather seen an adult-only version of this movie? Uh, or would you were you okay or with did you want more more... Kids and adults, like it's intertwined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian Lozano says, "Hello, my friends. Hey, hey how's it going, Brian? Yeah. Um, whereas I think the part that that also, well, I guess you and I are like split. We're Mike, definitely split. Mike, yeah, Mike. What, what are you, you with think? <laughs> I think uh, I I would have been okay with the trilogy as well. And I think I we think we didn't talk about a trilogy. Though. I, I don't know, but but <laughs> but, but the, like the trilogy as well with it going back and forth, and then uh, because it feels like like it it feels like the editing wasn't complete yet. Like if it, it felt like there was like it needed more time. It needed more time in the edit uh, edit room to just cut more stuff out. Yeah. Like like I think I think there were a lot of lulls in it, and I think it's like it kind of remind it actually reminded me of like like a. Uh, the same things that happen in other uh, Stephen King films, spe- specifically his like four or five hour films, where like where like it just it lingers. It, it does it yeah. lingers way yeah. longer than it has to be, and there's there's back and forth dialogue that yeah. doesn't need to be there. And uh, I think uh, yeah, I long yeah, yeah, I just need it needed to be sh- the uh, other the, the, the other thing. Maybe you can agree with me on this, Mike. But the other thing, or maybe not, or maybe not. <laughs> the other thing that I really disliked about this movie, and again, don't get me wrong, it's a dine in. You should go watch it; it's really fun. <clears throat> but the other part is that there are a lot of these hidden, these moments of heightened stress and and fear that then get trumped by a comedic moment. Mm. Uh, as simple as somebody screaming because they bumped into something, and because of that, it kind of ruins the suspense. I I didn't feel scared at all in this movie. Not like I was in the first one. In the first one, there was moments of pure tension, and you were holding on to things. And this one, those moments of tension, I think because yeah. of the adults, were ruined by some of the comedy that, that were that were kind of being tossed in there i know like, this is a question to mike but i'm just gonna say go the first it. one did not scare me there was maybe one jump scare yeah. with, with the projector but the film did, wasn't scary you mean watching a child be like ripped his arm ripped off and him crawling not any more than in this film this what That's, happens in this film is worse what happens in this film i don't think in it, the fun house the fun houses they barely show I mean, listen yeah. i'm not i'm not saying i want to watch kids be eaten alive by a monster <laughs> however I think he does however, I, think saying, I think you're exactly however right. that was a that was a great moment in in cinema where it opens up with uh with the boy getting his arm bitten off and then bleeding down the street and this one you see the little boy in the little fun house again. don't it's, say it it's in the trailer there's no way of me ruining this and it wasn't even in the book and then like you don't even see anything happen because I, it all just cuts away and you're like i think there is there is less score in this overall. that's what i mean yeah it is it is i think it is lighter horror than the first yeah. e- even well i mean like i remember even in the first one where like pennywise is eating a baby and he's like flopping the hand at the kids you're like oh that's really yeah grotesque. i remember that but in yeah. this one there was nothing like that um yeah. and so for me i think that was that was a huge problem because i really want i want to watch a scary movie but instead i get like a very pg-13 yeah i agree you know yeah, yeah. It, do you think, do you think it's, it was done on purpose because he had they had a really beating pennywise so they're they i don't know no but I don't know. Yeah, mike, mike what were you gonna say no no i i i think that that there are moments in this film where uh that I think they pulled they pulled away they pulled back a lot more and yeah. I do agree that this is definitely more like PG thirteen leaning and I think that it it did kind of uh, hurt the film a little bit in terms of like the horror element of it and like I don't think the f- um, the fear is as strong for uh, Pennywise as it was in the first yeah and I don't know what the what the reason behind is because you showed so much grotesque things with the children that I was assuming there would be more of that for the adults but instead they cut away so much that I was I like th- you know that the one the one of the opening uh, portions in the book is that um, the hate crime that happens in the beginning oh yeah, yeah you know yeah. Um, and in the books like it's a very grotesque scene and it's a very grotesque scene in the movie itself with the humans but then when you get to the Pennywise scene 
mean, that whole sequence is such a traumatizing experience for the boyfriend because you get to see it through his perspective, and he tells um, he tells um, uh, Ben Mike. uh, Mike's character, and you're like, oh my goodness, I would not want to see my you know my 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 significant other be torn apart like that. Like, but instead balloons and it just goes away yeah you don't see anything yeah yeah and i and i think that's it i the reason why i feel like they didn't establish uh pennywise as a scary character they they kept because they keep pulling away from it did and then those those little creepy moments that you mentioned in uh in chapter one you know him biting the arm off of georgie yeah and he's like crawling away from the sewers like you you it doesn't pull away like you're forced to watch it and exactly as he said exactly how he's like terrorizing the kids you know holding the little baby baby arm to say hello yeah or like th- there are these other things like that where where you're truly terrified for for the kids like wh- every time they experience pennywise like there's this real I felt like a real fear for the kids, like, oh my god, they they might die. In uh in chapter two, I've never really felt that way for the adults. Yeah. Like it always seemed like uh and and, and I understand like without without giving too much away, they do kind of explain some of it and uh one of the characters does explain it uh with one of the experiences that they have. But aside from that, I, I feel like uh yeah, that uh yeah, it just was never really Yeah uh as it, it was almost like Pennywise was just trying to scare them. Yeah. He wasn't trying to kill them. You're right. It and wasn't, it wasn't the yeah. same thing, which which I understand because that is the Pennywise character, right? The reason why Pennywise uh, makes kids scared before he eats them is because it tenderizes the meat. Uh, that's that's in the books. Uh, and so what I was hoping to see with the adults was something similar where it wasn't just going to be one scary thing. It had to be a really outrageously... And I think we do get a little bit of that with the Bev character, but, yeah. but that's about it. We don't get much more than that. But even even then, like like I mean, it's a it's a fun scene, and we I think everyone's seen the trailer, and and I have to thank the the trailer house for not giving that away. It's no, different. Yeah, it's yeah, different it's in different, the film. Yeah, yeah. I was I was I was like pleasantly surprised. I yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, I was surprised in that. I, one I, was, well. I was I was I was like, here it is, the scene I've seen a billion times in the trailer, and I was like, oh, it's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's different. I was like, oh. F- I really was like, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, it even sounds different. I was yeah. like, yes, it's different. I, I was, I was happy that they, right. that they, uh, that it was still a surprise. But, um, but even then, like, like it was horrifying for that moment. But then, like, they pull away from it again, and I was like, I was like, what? Happened? I don't know the the Richie scene as well. That was terrifying with uh with the statue. That's it, it, it 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 was, but then the, but it like pulls back again. Yeah, and and it keeps doing that, and and that was kind of frustrating for me. Where it's kind of like. It's the same frustration as like I don't know uh I know it's a terrible example but like the the most recent Predator film. Yep. Like oh, the, that's the one I watched. The, <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> where, where like like it's they're, gory though. When when, yeah. when when Predator's fighting like like just like uh side characters he'll like rip their spines yeah. out but when he's fighting the main characters he'll like swat them or throw them. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. like Penny it's kind of like the same thing with like Pennywise it's like it's like uh He's not using his full power. Like right. you don't feel it. Well, well see, it's, I watched the original or chapter one, and you know how Bev gets kidnapped, and yes. they're like, "Well, that's why he couldn't eat Bev was because Bev was not afraid of him." Okay. So they established that rule. Yes. So I think what they were trying to do in this film is was trying to get the fear back into these people. But they didn't do it in a way that was actually fearful, fearful for us. Yeah. No. But and that's I, what I mean. But I thought the sequences were really cool. Like the and they were. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Um. I also liked. Uh, um. I liked. Uh, uh, um. The Richie scene was great. Yeah, the Richie scene was fun. But at the same time, again, it could have gone a little further, especially with yeah. Richie's character who, you know, again, we don't want to talk about spoilers here, but what his his fear actually is, it could have gone more it could have. psychological. Like it could have really gone more psychological and I would have thoroughly enjoyed kind of like it going in that direction. Yeah. Even for Eddie's character. I think in the original script, they, they, they pushed it more. Yeah. Um, and But even for Eddie's character, like his, that would have been... Like that, that guy is like super anxious. Like you could easily do a really like hard psychological thing because and anyways, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, so we need to talk about spoilers yeah. once we start getting into yeah, it. They estab- yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it in spoilers, but they do establish something that's like, Oh, I know what's going to happen and it's going to be cool when it does. Yeah. And then it doesn't. And it's like, yeah. Oh. yeah, but I'll, I'll get into it in our uh, yes. audio. Oh yeah. Podcast, okay. so. I, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so uh, let's talk about um, the music. Do 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 do. No, uh, the the cameos that we have. Do you want oh, to yeah, talk about yeah, that? There's cameos. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's there's uh, would those be spoilers though? Like yeah, there's surprises. Uh, that's, I'll leave it up to you. I'm gonna guys. say there's spoilers. There's surprises, and they're fun. Oh uh, yeah, I guess I guess it would be spoilers. Oh, yeah. Okay, well you know that there's cameos, so keep an eye out. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what did uh, what would you uh, let's see. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so like I, I just I, yeah, want, I, I, I want to say like something, but then I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, oh, sandwich. Got you. Well, <laughs> let's go into the spoiler section. Uh, we, we're a little bit due for that, so um, yeah, I think it's time that we go into spoilers. I think hard, it is. It's hard to talk around it without giving something away. It is. Yeah. Uh, though I technically did spoil something, so sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, hopefully you didn't realize it. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, that will end uh, the live feed. Yes. So thank you guys so much for watching us thank live on Facebook. Uh, again, this is a bonus episode. We're not going to be back next week with our new episode. We will be back for Joker yes. uh, in October. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we just thought that It Chapter 2 would be a fun movie to review. Uh, so uh, make sure to subscribe to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher uh, in order to listen to our spoilerific review. Uh, make sure to visit our website at moviemenupodcast.com. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and our YouTube channel as well. Uh, we will see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Until next time, I'm Dan the Man. And thank you, Z. Thank you, thank you Mike. Thank you, Dan. Goodbye. See you guys later. A two, a three, a four. Skip it, 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 skip it